let's uh, add and subtract um, some more rational expressions. It's getting a little bit harder each time. And a couple that I'm going to have here are going to be simplified in the end. So pretty involved. Um, but this one's not too bad. Um, the two denominators, what's the common denominator between a 4 and a 6? That's all you have to ask yourself. It's a 12, right? So um, I need to get a common denominator of 12. And it's got to have an x in it, because both of these denominators have an x. So this 3x minus 2 over this 4x, I'm going to do this you know, officially, um, needs to be multiplied by 3 over 3 for that denominator to become the 12x. So please remember, you've got to take this 3 times 3x and get 9x, and this 3 times a minus 2 and get a minus 6, and then you have that common denominator. And then, this is a subtraction problem, but I'm not going to pay attention to that. Uh, the 3x plus 1 has a 6x in the denominator, so it officially needs a 2 um, to make the denominator become a 12x. So the 2 has got to be multiplied by the 3x and the 1. So let's see, that would be a 6x plus 2. Is that right? 6x plus 2 over that common denominator of 12x. But remember, this is a subtraction problem. So when I take this numerator and subtract that numerator, it's like multiplying all of it by a negative 1 or adding the opposite of these. So again, use that color so that you can see which sign prevails. And the 9x minus 6x is a 3x. And this minus 6 and a minus 2 is a minus 8 over the common denominator of 12x. And there's nothing else that I can do with that. Again, nothing that can be done with that 3x and that 8. Let's now get a couple of trinomials in our uh, denominators. So this was a real simple one, really, except for it was a subtraction problem. And so let's work with this trinomial in this denominator. Now there's a subtraction problem, so I'm going to have to be careful. and then that trinomial in the second denominator. So add and subtract fractions, factor the denominators only. So what two numbers multiply to be 30 and add to be 11? It's going to be a 6 and a 5. What two numbers multiply to be 20, add to be 9? That's going to be a 5 and a 4. So of these binomials, I have to use them all once. The x plus 5 only needs to be used once because it occurs once in any of the, the common in, in any of these denominators. So my LCD has got to have that one. It's got to have that one. It's already got that one. It's got to have the x plus 4. So my LCD needs three binomials. I'll go ahead and put them in order. It needs the x plus 4. It needs the x plus 5. And it needs the x plus 6. So, I'm going to kind of be a little slip slide here in that this fraction has those two denominators. Which one is it missing? Yeah, it's the x plus 4. So, what happens is when people show this top and bottom, they sometimes cross it off, and that's the worst thing you can do. But, you know, I am really multiplying top and bottom of this by x plus 4. I'm trying to show it really small here so I don't get tempted to cross those off. You're writing an equivalent fraction, which is going to be x squared plus 4x. x squared plus 4x. And now that denominator is the x plus 6, it's the x plus 5, and it's the x plus 4. This fraction over here, the denominator has the x plus 5 and the x plus 4. But it doesn't have the x plus 6, so real boldly I'm going to write over here that that numerator has got to be multiplied by the x plus 6. But don't forget, you're multiplying it by the top and bottom by the x plus 6. I'm just trying to show that kind of small. If When this is a monomial, it's easier to go like that and distribute a negative 5 times x and get a minus 5x and a negative 5 times 6 and get a minus 30. But I just have to remind myself that I changed that into an addition problem now. 
and the denominator is the x plus 5 that it already had, the x plus 4 it already had, and I just put the x plus 6 into the denominator. And I'm now ready to add those two numerators, so I'm going to combine my like terms. 4x minus 5x is a minus 1x. I'm going to put the x squared term first. So I have x squared minus the 1x, and then this minus 30. I'll step back so you can see this in a minute, and we'll check it out again. <coughs> So I think I'm all done. Again, I put the x squared down in that numerator. The 4x minus the 5x is the minus 1x. And then this minus 30 I put down. And again, I thought I was all done. I put that answer down, and my students going to get marked. They're going to get marked wrong for that problem. They're going to get a little part. They're going to get partial credit. But this can be factored again. Um, it has two numbers whose product is a negative 30. Um, I think that's going to be a 6 and a 5. I want the 6 to be negative and the 5 to be positive because I want those two numbers to add to be this minus 1. And when I can factor that into that expression, I see that the numerator of this problem and the denominator of this problem have an x plus 5 that can be removed. They are equal to 1. And so what I'm left with is the x minus 6 in the numerator, the x plus 4, and the x plus 5 in the denominator. Let's go ahead. I think we have time to throw one more in here. But this one was, was pretty interesting, pretty challenging. <clears throat> Might be a little bit of a long clip, but um, again, denominators had to be factored. I'm going to leave some of that up while I write the new problem up, so you can be catching up with me. And the new problem is going to look like this. button and play again. Um, got to factor the denominators. I'm not going to use the AC method to do this. I'm just going to do this, um, if you will, trial and error, but I'm, I tend to be pretty good at being able to figure out that I'm going to need to factor this denominator. I'm going to need a 3y and a y here, and I think I'm going to need a positive 4 here and a minus 1 there. Yeah, that's the correct factorization. And then here, I'm going to eyeball it. Probably I'm going to need a minus 2 here and a positive 4 there. I'm just checking this minus 6 and positive 4 is a minus 2. Yeah, that looks good. So this is a little hard to read. Let's fix that 4. So there's the factored form of the denominators. So 3y plus 4 is common in each of them. But this one has a y minus 2 and this one, uh, y minus 1, I'm sorry, and that one has a y minus 2. So I need those three things in my LCD. I need the 3y plus 4, but I need the y minus 1 and the y minus 2. I need both of those. So this denominator is missing the y minus 2. Remember, you're, you're getting that y minus 2 in that denominator. So that's going to be called a 7y minus 14. Again, that's what people forget to do. So 7y minus 14. I need to save myself a little bit of space. And I'm going to say to myself that this now has the LCD. It's got these two in that third binomial. This one has the 3y plus 4 and the y minus 2, but it doesn't have the y minus 1. So this up here has to be multiplied by the y minus 1. Don't forget, it's going to become part of, it, of the common denominator. This is where people make a mistake. This is a binomial. It needs to be foiled through that binomial. So 9y times y is 9y squared. And then 9y times a minus 1 is a minus 9y. And if you can do this in your head, that's cool. 2 times y is 2y. And 2 times a minus 1 is a minus 2 over the LCD. And oh, good, this was an addition problem. Again, I could have called that a minus 7y right in the beginning, but I'll catch it right now. So in terms of y squared terms, 
I have just a 9y squared. I have a 7y, a minus 9y, and a 2y. Those are all like terms. So those combine to be a minus 7y. And this is 7y. Oh, no y terms left. And then this minus 14 and this minus 2 combine to be a minus 16. So over here in my numerator, I have a difference of squares. And now I'm going to write down what my denominator was. Okay. And I always should pause and say to myself, gosh, can that numerator be factored? Yeah, it's the difference of squares. I'm going to do it a little bit more neatly this time. It can be factored into 3y plus 4 and 3y minus 4, that numerator. And in my denominator, I have a 3y plus 4. And so in the last step of any of these adding and subtracting problems, I have to remember to do my simplification work. And my answer to this problem is the 3y minus 4 over these two binomials. That's my solution. I don't have enough space to rewrite that, but please remember, that would be my answer. No need to foil this out. We don't typically do that. Um, when we add and subtract fractions, we got to get a common denominator. We always write an equivalent expression. So this is the new numerator, the new numerator, and add or subtract those numerators and then reduce at the end. We're going to go on to solving rational equations in our next video clip. We spent quite a bit of time on this. This is one of the hardest topics, adding and subtracting rational expressions.